In today's video I want to show you the immortal Doomstorm Druid build. It is based on Andarius and temerity to generate an immense amount of barrier on top of your already stacked health pool. The biggest two problems I had with all the variations of Doomstorm were its missing spirit per second and squishiness, which leads to some unpleasant encounters with death. This version fixes those issues and gets rid of the wild hunger boots while maintaining a very high DPS with basically no drawbacks. As far as mechanics go, we are using Andarius to generate life on hit which is responsible for nearly all of our sustain. Our health pool is also very high which benefits us greatly through temerity, generating insane amounts of barrier on top of our already great defenses. Keep in mind our spells repeatedly hit enemies, even if we are stunned or disabled you always generate barrier. This also keeps your earthen bulwark off CD for when you really need it. We further combine this with Tyrrell's Might for a nice thick layer of DR and max resistances as well as movement speed to be able to dodge mechanics and move around. The Earthbreaker Ring allows us to repeatedly proc Nature's Fury with its unique effect and we combine this with the Ring of Starless Skies to grab a ton of additional stats. With both rings providing us with ranks to landslide which in turn allows us to waste no points on that spell and focus on ways to maximize our lightning storm damage. And because we are not going to use wild hunger boots, we can grab willpower, armor and spirit per second on our beloved boots. You might think we are losing too much damage because of this, but given our willpower is actually not all that high, it's just around 20 to 30 percent at max stacks. The shapeshifting attack speed is wasted and we can equip temerity for more HP, DR and thick barrier. No more stack maintenance, no billions of gold spent on a unique and actual spirit region which is great for quality of life. No more unlucky streaks of running out of spirit, it just feels much better to play. All this and more can be found in written form on the Mobilitics Planner with detailed sections for each topic and multiple planners for each stage of the game. Make sure to also leave a like here which would help me out a lot. Next let's have a look at the skill tree and subsequently the paragon board before we dive into the gear and stats. So first let's have a look at the spirit boons, we're going to go with wariness in the deer, with iron feathers as well as avian wrath in the eagle. Now swooping attacks can be good if you do not have enough attack speed. I'm currently at 88.3% so I'm overcapping with it, so it's not an option. But if you do not have just gear, you can grab the souping attacks early on and drop iron feathers for this. Later on, I would not advise to drop iron feathers because it's a more multiplier to maximum life. In the wolf, we pick energize. This takes care of spirit for us. However, sometimes you just run out of luck and cannot proc energize, so you run out of spirit. In this case, we have our boots with spirit per second, which helps immensely with this. And in the snake luster, we pick up calm before the storm. This is very, very good for bossing. It basically guarantees us that Petrify is always up and providing us with a 50% more damage multiplier. And it also provides us with a way to regenerate spirit if we ever run out. For the skill tree, we pick up one pointing claw with enhanced claw. This is specifically just so you can proc your quick shift down below in the ultimate cluster. Next, we pick up lightning storm with enhanced lightning storm and raging lightning storm. We pick up wild impulses for 15% more damage. We do not need any points in landslide. This is because of the earth breaker ring providing us with landslide ranks as well as the ring of starless skies providing us with core skill ranks so we automatically unlock this one and don't have to worry about it in the defensive cluster we pick up earthen bulwark with one point in enhanced earthen bulwark for unstoppable we usually do not use earthen bulwark except when we really need it so just for the unstoppable buff so keep that in mind do not press earthen bulwark when you don't need it we pick up ancestral fortitude as well as vigilance cyclone armor for dr as well as to push enemies away from from us into the distant range so our more multiplier down below in the companion cluster nature's reach does proc that's 15 percent more damage to distant enemies enemies that are slowed stunned immobilized or knocked back which is the case with our cyclone armor we receive 30 percent more damage and then we pick up blood hall for more sustain and a way to proc quick shift during creeping in the companion cluster we pick up nature's reach in the ref cluster we have elemental exposure for vulnerability application we pick up charged atmosphere one point just so we can get to bad omen as well as electric shock electric shock provides us with 21 percent more lightning damage and bad omen provides us with a chance to proc a lightning bolt. Lightning bolts with the electrocution glyph 
will provide us with a 20% more damage multiplier on this specific enemy that was hit by the lightning bolt. Then we pick up Crushing Earth as well as Stone Guard for more damage and Safeguard for Fortified Generation. Stone Guard as well as Crushing Earth and Safeguard both work because Nature's Fury makes our Lightning Storm an Earth skill as well as a Storm skill. Then we pick up Venom for a more multiplier, pick up Defiance as well as Natural Disaster for more damage, pick up Petrify with its upgrades so you can reduce the cooldown and generate spirit and we pick up Quick Shift as well as Nature's Fury. Specifically for Vigilance, we are going to proc this one constantly with our Cyclone Armor. So you're going to press Cyclone Armor on repeat constantly without a break to keep this buff up. It is constantly going to reset because of Nature's Fury and our symbiotic aspect on our boots because we are going to cast Landslides. Next, a quick look at the Paragon board. We're going to pick up the Spirit Glyph in the first starter cluster. We path through the right side because we do not need the armor. We are still going to pick up the additional maximum life here. We pick up two additional points here because that's around 1% more damage per point. We have the Spirit Glyph in the starter cluster cluster. Next is Constricting Tendrils. We do not need Constricting Tendrils anymore because we have Andariers. We have one time left for the Earth and Sky Glyph. This one provides us with maximum life, maximum life, maximum life, so a lot of health, as well as 10% more damage. We have left, pick up the Thunderstruck board. This one is going to be very easily maxed out through just one temper. The Glyph in here is Electrocution, and we pick a little bit of life here. Afterwards, go back to the Constricting Tendrils board and pick up Superiority, path to Earth and Devastation, pick this up, pick up the Crowd Control damage here, grab Fulminate, path to the Inner Beast board. We pick up Keeper here for more armor. Armor is very important for us we need to get it somehow on the build early on this will cap your armor otherwise it's just a nice way to multiply your damage by 10 percent then we pick up tenacity with more armor and more life and we finish up with ancestral guidance as well as on the left side right underneath the thunderstruck board with heightened malice a quick word on urban devastation urban devastation is very easily kept on this build so you don't necessarily need those two points you can get those through just regular upgrades on your weapons. However, it is very, very close. Now, speaking of gear, we are going to start with Andariers. Andariers is going to be our headpiece. You want to masterwork this one for attack speed. Live on hit will give you more sustain. All stats will give you more damage. Ideally, you want to masterwork attack speed three times, not just two times, but it's very expensive. Then you want Tyrus Might. Tyrus Might provides you with the R2 times here and maximum resistances. With the current setup, we are only at 80.9% maximum resistances. This means you want to hit the last masterwork on maximum resistances to get this one close to 85%. Then we have Unsung. For this one, hit all your masterworks on Lightning Storm. This will provide you with more and more and more damage. However, there is a drawback to this. It has diminishing returns. At 20 additional ranks in Lightning Storm, you're only getting 2.5% more damage per additional rank in Lightning Storm. The more points you put into Lightning Storm, the less value you get out of this one. Which brings me to the Ring of Starless Skies. I have plus to core skills on this one. I do not think plus on core skills is that valuable here. I would much rather prefer this one to be either attack speed or critical strike chance. Both are basically the same value. We are currently at 88 and 84 percent. So one less rank into core skills would provide us with a little bit more attack speed and critical strike chance, which is just generally more damage. Still for the unsung, I would still go with three masterworks here. Then we have temerity. All your masterworks either on maximum life or damage reduction both are very valuable to you basically equal in survivability increase and you want to have a hundred percent barrier here it is much more valuable than any other role on this item so if you can find a greater fx one with 100 barrier great for you but otherwise just a regular plain temerity with maximum barrier 100 maximum life is the way to go all your gems here are going to be hp however at this point we are at 44k health with a 44k barrier so we are basically immortal 90k life that's way too much you can take out for example one gem that's going to lower your hp by around 3.5k get to around 30k life and put in willpower gems so sapphires this will provide you with more and more damage you want to reach around 1500 willpower to really get the best benefit out of this one then for our boots we want symbiotic aspect on those willpower spirit per second and armor on the tempers chance to stun and movement speed or the digital gate gate both are great i personally prefer movement speed because it's just available all the time i can dodge attacks better and i like the consistency more for main hand we want a dagger this is the case because 
because it is a 1.2 attacks per second weapon, a very fast weapon instead of a 1.1 attacks per second weapon, provides us with just the best DPS. We want willpower, maximum life and crit strike damage on this one, chance for landslide projectiles to cast twice and damage to distant or crowd control damage. It doesn't matter, you just need one damage to distant and two crowd control damage on either your totem or your amulet or your weapon. So this one is interchangeable. For the print, we want retaliation for 40% more damage. Now on our totem, willpower, maximum life, critical strike chance to get this one as high as possible. Again, crowd controlled or distant depending on what you are currently in need of. And again, chance for landslide projectiles to cast twice. You want to masterwork chance for landslide projectiles to cast twice on both your weapons as well as your ring to get to 100%. With everything maxed, you are going to reach 100%. If you reach 100%, change up the masterworks to willpower and your priority on the totem is willpower, maximum life and then critical strike chance. On your weapon, willpower, maximum life and then critical strike damage. For the earthbreaker ring, chance for landslide projectiles to cast twice if this one is not a greater FX. Otherwise, you are going to just change this one slightly at 100% again willpower is better otherwise you need the masterworks on chance for landslide projectiles to cast twice critical strike chance below 100 percent earth attack speed over caps attack speed so this one is great regardless then here ring of starless skies below 100 percent on attack speed or critical strike chance masterwork those if you get above 100 percent core skill ranks are better and on the amulet critical strike chance to reach 100 percent if you reach 100 percent maximum life can be beneficial otherwise quick shift is better then you want a greater affix and venom and and try to roll defiance on this one or grab defiance as a greater affix. Then we have damage to crowd controlled or distant depending on what you have on your weapons. If you have damage to distant and crowd controlled on your weapons, you want damage to crowd controlled on your amulet. If you have two times damage to crowd controlled on your weapons, you want damage to distant on your amulet. And the last one is going to be a wild card. You can go with movement speed. Movement speed is going to benefit you greatly on this build. We are not movement speed capped. Otherwise, spirit generation or resource generation can also be very good if you are struggling with resources. Anyway, this sums up the video. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you have not already. And see you next time. Bye.